Okay, in continuation of my uh, overview discussion of uh, an attack downdraft wood gasification boiler and 1,000 gallons of storage, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about storage, the thermal storage, and uh, what role it serves in the system. Um, the mechanical part of it, there's two 500-gallon uh, LP tanks uh, in horizontal configuration, one's just placed on top of the other on some metal framing. Um, the most important part of your thermal storage is to insulate it very well. Um, both tanks were individually spray foamed with, to about an inch and a half thickness. Um, and then a sheet foam was placed on the back wall of the enclosure uh, on top of the concrete floor. And then the entire thing framed in uh, two by four studs, R13 fiberglass insulation on the sides. And uh, we, we have four inches of uh, polystyrene foam on the top. That's worth about R16. Even so, um, there's enough heat loss to keep a 24 by 48 uh, building that the boiler system is in to about 50, somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees which is great because you come out here, you can watch TV and uh, build your fires, do your batch burns, uh, instead of trying to stand outside in the wind and things like that. Um, that's another reason I prefer indoor storage somewhere in a building that can use the heat. Um, because with an outdoor boiler, I don't care how well things are insulated, um, there's gonna be some heat loss to the great outdoors with an outside boiler. Um, so, a couple things, uh, calculations you can do. You want to know, uh, I'll get to the calculations in a bit, but why, what are the advantages of thermal storage for the system? Uh, for me, it's a big convenience. It, if I have enough thermal storage, I can do batch burns about, the goal would be just to do one per day. Um, when I want to do them, and that would be in the evening after I'm done, done with work. You know, you work 10, 12 hour days sometimes. Um, with a conventional wood burner, like a wood stove or a wood furnace, uh, you cannot be away that long and expect to maintain heat in your, in your structure. So the thermal storage gives you time. Um, you pull heat from storage as you need it. Um, and when you need it. So you have a lot better temperature control in your st heated structure. Uh, you're not wood furnace, wood stove. Sometimes you got the house at 75 degrees. Sometimes you're at 60. Um, the other uh, system advantage is uh, the wood gasification boiler. Uh, they are designed to run almost wide open or wide open, They're, that's where they're most efficient, that's where they burn the cleanest. It's when you try to slow down the burn, uh, when they go into idle mode, uh, which, which they do if, if uh, you've satisfied your heat demand and you don't, you don't wanna overheat the boiler, you don't wanna overheat your piping, so it has to go into idle mode. Uh, not necessarily, uh, that doesn't usually happen with the storage, uh, unless you would make a, a mistake on if you just overfired the boiler with too much wood and your, and your thermal storage was already up to temperature. Um, so, and it also, the other advantage is the boiler sizing to your heat load. Now, if you don't have thermal storage, you need to size your, uh, your boiler output very closely um, to your heat load in your house. Otherwise, say your boiler has double the output required uh, to satisfy the house demand, well, it's going to go into idle all the time. It's going to burn inefficiently. It's going to get full, filled up with creosote, um, all, ba all bad things. But with thermal storage, uh, we purposely oversize the boiler a little bit. Um, this is a 45 kilowatt boiler, which is equivalent to 153,000 BTU per hour. And uh, there's no way my house would 
we could use 153,000 BTUs of heat in one hour. But with a thousand gallons of storage, uh, that's where the heat goes. So, how much, how much heat and how long can we go with the, the heat stored? Well, I don't have a fancy whiteboard, we'll come over here. So we just need to do some basic math. So it takes 8.33 BTU to raise one gallon of water, one degree Fahrenheit. So how many BTUs do we have available on a thousand gallons of storage? Well, it depends on a few things. Uh, the biggest thing it depends on is uh, your heat emitters in the house and how effective they are at lower temperatures. When Say when the storage gets down to 135 Fahrenheit, or do they still heat the house? In my case, they do, and they probably even go lower than that. I just haven't figured that out yet. But, so how do we, so how many BTUs are available uh, to heat my house? And that's right here. We look at the storage tops out about 185 degrees Fahrenheit, and the heat house still heats at 135. So we look at that delta, 50 degree delta. And we have a thousand gallons, so 50 degrees times thousand gallons times that 8.33 number. So we have 416,500 BTUs available. Um, now, is that enough to get us 24 hours? Well, that depends how much uh, heat your house requires. Now, if you have different types of emitters in the house that work at lower temperatures, you get even more advantage. Um, if you have in-floor heat, radiant tubing in your concrete floors. That's the effect that ideally works at about 100 degrees. So you your storage will be good down to maybe 110. Um, so now you have a 75 degree delta times 1,000 gallons times 8.33. So now your, your storage is going to last you even longer with that type of emitters. So on the, on the other end of the spectrum, if your house was uh, built for a, uh, say, an oil boiler or a propane boiler um, and has uh, the old style uh, baseboard, tube and fin, those uh, a lot of times require 180 degree water all the time to put out the rated output. And so what you may find is your water drops even down to 150 uh, your house is getting cold because you don't have enough emitters in the house. And so that can be a problem. You need to, so you need to add more emitters. Um, sometimes uh, easier said than done, depending on your house. Now, the other thing you need to worry about with storage a little bit is okay. Um, I need to do a batch burn. I've been 20 going, it's been off for 24 hours or 24 hours ago was about my last batch burn. Uh, we need to do another one. But how much wood do we need to burn? We don't want to overcharge our, our storage, although I'll have to admit with a thousand gallons it's rather difficult to do that. It can be done. So we can use some of the same calculations we just looked at, but first of all, we need to de determine how much temperature we need to gain. So we look at the tank temperatures and you, you want at least uh, three positions on your storage tanks. So we have basically near the top of the top tank. We have the uh, bottom of the, this can be either the bottom of the top tank or the top of the bottom tank. I think it's the top of the bottom tank in my case. And here we're down low on the bottom tank. And you can see there's a difference. Uh, we have some stratification going on, which is normal. So we want to add all three of those readings in average, uh, get the average temperature of the entire storage. So then we can come back over here and basically use the same formula. Say we're down to an average of 135, we want to get to 185. We need, so that we need to add 416,000 BTU back into storage. Okay, so now we need to know, well, how much, how much wood does it take? To, uh, how, 
you know, per, and we look usually the best way to look at it is you want to look at pounds uh, pounds of wood required to uh, to get to that BTU level. And uh, we know, just Google it. We know that wood, no matter what species, if you look at a per pound, will provide uh, in its purest state 8,600 BTUs per pound, and that would be perfectly dry. And that would be burning it in an uh, appliance that is 100% efficient. Well, that's not typically what the case. I don't, we don't have perfection, so we have to reduce that 8,600 by two things, uh, the moisture content of the wood and the efficiency of our appliance. Now, I'm not gonna get into the math here, but basically I use a figure of about uh, the wood will contribute, uh, considering moisture content of about 15 to 20 percent, and uh, the efficiency of a wood gasification boiler, which is typically around 85 to 90 percent efficient. So I use a rather conservative figure of I'm going to get approximately 6,000 BTUs from a pound of wood. So we take our 416,000. <laughs> BTUs, we divide by 6,000, and that gives us uh, the number of pounds of wood we need to load into our boiler. And again, all wood, different wood species, they all provide about the same BTU per pound. The big difference is the density. Uh, so obviously, the pounds of the volume of the for a given poundage of cottonwood is going to be a lot greater than compared to that to white oak. White oak is a lot denser, uh, so the, that's going to fit in the boiler easier. If we're burning cottonwood, we might have to do a couple loads depending on the BQ we need. And that pretty much covers it for uh, the storage, the advantages, and some a couple of the calculations. Next video, I'll, I'll cover uh, getting getting the heat to the house and what's what's required there.